I'm what? Who the hell are you? Kamala, please meet my white boyfriend. Never Have I Ever's fourth season neatly concludes the series by ensuring that all of the main characters are attached by the show's conclusion. The series finale of the show makes sure that each plot comes to a satisfying conclusion after following the protagonists throughout their four frantic and unforgettable years of high school. Although Never Have I Ever pretends to have a happy ending, it seems to have an unquenchable need to match everyone up. While the show's other messages like family, progress, and mental health are very strong, it almost seems random how characters are paired together for romance. While in other instances the relationships detract from potentially better messages, some interactions become superfluous and shallow. Ultimately, is it really a crime to leave a couple of people single? I'm what? Who the hell are you? Kamala, please meet my white boyfriend. Some romances don't add to the show, Never Have I Ever is a young adult series, thus romance is a big element of it, and each relationship so far has had its own special appeal. But season 4 has given place to a flood of mediocre relationships that occasionally have no point or are hard to invest in. The idea of being partnered up is just a subject of obsession on the show. Even Nirmala, Ranjita Chakravarti, gets married this season. But we can excuse the unpredictability of the union because her interracial romance has funny storylines and enough quirky details. Conversely, Fabiola's connection to Addison is essentially non existent. Even the final montage that celebrates where each character is after graduating portrays Fabiola with Gears in a robotic lab. Her friendship with Gears was worth showing over her relationship with Addison. The relevance of each romance can essentially be assessed using the final montage as a benchmark. After her husband's terrible death, Devi's mother is seen with her new love interest, emphasizing the value of companionship and romantically moving on. Tramp supports Eleanor while she reimagines her acting goals. Manish and Kamala are strolling down the street with ice cream after relocating so that Kamala can pursue an interesting opportunity. After being accepted into Princeton, Devi is cuddling with her endgame. There are only two people seen alone. Fabiola and Paxton. Even the show admits that their relationships were unnecessary and did little to further their futures. Paxton's relationship with Lindsay is completely redundant, especially since the scenes of him training Eric to become a swimmer are what really ignited his passion for teaching. Lindsay just ends up being a person he could verbalize these feelings to, there was no reason to make them a couple. Both Fabiola and Paxton end up in relationships just for the sake of being in a relationship, the lack of chemistry and permeating purposelessness render them entirely superficial and unnecessary. Anissa, the only member of the main cast who isn't in a relationship, has an entirely different plot in the final season. Anissa established herself on the program throughout the second and third seasons as the obstinate jock who ended up in two quite different relationships. She almost exudes independence, and given her negative high school dating experiences, staying single all through her senior year fits her personality well. But with only a few very brief appearances on screen, Anissa's singleness is just obscured and fails to make any sort of impact. It's almost as if the show didn't have the screen time to add in another arbitrary romance, so they just wrote her off to avoid her uncoupled status. Shifting away from Fabiola's and Paxton's random relationships and focusing on their and Anissa's growth as individuals may have served the show more. Never Have I Ever's major romance detracts from its strongest message. Devi was lately coping with the grief of losing her father by wishing for top grades, a hot boyfriend, and popularity when we first met her. Over the course of the year, she gradually started to heal and frequently rearranged her priorities. By the conclusion, she is just grateful for what she has rather than longing for more, which is counterintuitively because, at this time, Devi has already fulfilled all of her goals from the first season. Letting up of old dreams and hopes that have only hurt your mental health and sense of worth generally goes hand in hand with growth, healing, and maturing. Considering how many times being obsessed over Princeton, over who likes her or not, and over being in a relationship has negatively impacted Devi, it's only natural to suppose that after her growth, she would move on from them. Instead, by rewarding her with both Princeton and a boyfriend, the show detracts from her coming-of-age story.
Devi was ghosted shortly after losing her virginity to Ben at the start of season 4. Throughout the season, their friendship slowly begins to grow again, especially considering that this is their final year as rivals. Devi and Paxton end up trapped in a storage room later on in the season, enjoying a covert kiss that gives them both closure. This enduring legendary love triangle necessitates an explanation on the part of the program. However, there are typically three options in a conventional love triangle. Neither, person one, or person two. The impact of Devi's development is lessened by the revelation in the grand finale that she selects Ben as her end goal, even if Ramakrishnan confesses she wasn't always on his team. Choosing neither however would resolve the self-love and mental health journey she truly began to progress with in season 3, particularly emphasizing her newfound self-reliance and confidence.